This video engages my top two irritations, the police and YouTube, both derived from one short video that recently went viral on Twitter. <laughs> So not only do this mob of gutter rats terrorise ordinary people in a supermarket on their push bikes, they then assault the guy that tries to intervene. My first thought, actually my second thought because the first one isn't publishable, my second thought was to wonder what, if anything, the police had done about this. After a brief search, I came across Brighton and Hove Police's Facebook page, where they'd added the video asking those who'd been involved in the incident to come forward. Scrolling down were a number of comments naming the YouTube account where this video originated from. Sure enough, when I searched for user Wheelie K, he had posted a follow-up video, faking contrition for what he'd done, and clearly in such a rush to do so, he'd forgotten to put on a shirt. I won't bore you with the content, as he does a good job of that by himself, but he attempts to justify his criminality the only way he knows how, by playing the victim. Yes, you see, the only reason this poor innocent mite and his gang of lost souls felt the urge to invade an Asda supermarket and terrorise shoppers was because the local authority haven't built any special bike parks for him and his mates. Oh, bless. Cry me a fucking river. Somebody left the following comment underneath his video. You are without doubt the most clueless moron that has ever uploaded to YouTube. You and your friends are minus thugs, and if the police don't prosecute you, I'll do it myself. Look forward to my channel uploading a video about this. You are everything that is wrong with basic parenting, YouTube, and the police, all rolled into one big joke that isn't funny. Oh, that somebody was me, by the way. That prompted a response from another YouTuber, who suggested I take a look at other accounts of those who may have been involved in the Azar incident. In this case, someone calling himself Little Harry 15. Sure enough, he's uploaded a ton of videos dating back two years that show the same type of glorification of criminal behaviour, most of which involve pulling wheelies on busy roads and pavements. Now, I couldn't care a toss if these pieces of shit fall beneath a vehicle and crayon themselves across a main road. The sooner the better, in my opinion. But it's the members of the public who are being put at risk here. One such video shows an altercation with a cab driver that one of the cyclists smashes into and a mob quickly gathers to intimidate the driver who soon becomes fearful for his own safety. Now, I haven't had the chance nor the inclination to go through all these YouTubers' uploads, but I did notice a few that involved scrapes with the police. But as their uploads have remained unrestricted for several years, it's safe to say that those encounters resulted in no penalty whatsoever. This kind of imbalance has always been a gripe of mine. Now, the police seem to give serial offenders the benefit of the doubt when it comes to law-breaking, but come down hard and heavy on ordinary people. Why is that? My own personal opinion is that firstly, the criminal underclass tend to be fawning and servile when it comes to police interactions. You only have to watch a few episodes of any cop reality show to see this in action. As long as you split them away from the pack or sober them up, as soon as they drop their hard man play acting, they wither at the police's feet like a dead daisy, telling them how sorry they are and what a wonderful job they're doing. At the very least, they'll allow the police to bully and preach at them without complaint. Contrary to what the police say, that it's only criminals that hate them, i found that it's those who most commonly encounter the police who are their most outspoken fans, simply because they know such flattery works. Stroking a policeman's ego is probably the best you can do if you want them to go easy on you, because they're as partial to it as any other sociopathic narcissist would be. The second reason they go so easy on recidivists is because these people tend to be ward of the state. 
By that, I mean they and their families are on so many different types of social security and monitored by so many different welfare services that their homes are virtually administrative offices of the local authority. The Bleeding Heart Brigade of the Police, which has been thoroughly infected with progressive left ideology, are told to believe that these people aren't just common criminals who see generosity and empathy as a weakness to be exploited, but instead are victims of an uncaring society who, with a bit of love and understanding, will become success stories. A hopelessly optimistic endeavour that exists primarily to inflate the egos of social worker types who see these people as their own personal pet projects. Now, this is just my personal opinion, which could very well be wrong, because what is more likely is that it all comes down to convenience and priority. Just how convenient is it for the police to pursue a line of inquiry that leads to a conviction? How much work will have to be done to locate and prosecute these individuals? And the priority test, as we all know, has nothing to do with the severity of the crime or how many people are potentially affected by it. If any one of these lads had made a transgender hate remark on Twitter, rather than terrorising and assaulting the public in gangs, every one of them would be staring up the nostrils of a hard-faced district judge right now, and police would be screeching from every social media platform how they'd slam the lid on yet another evil hate crime. But for once, the police aren't just the only villains in this piece. Let's not forget that the local authority of Brighton and Hove have also allowed this persistent offending to continue unabated for two years, despite the multiplicity of powers they have to stamp it out. In this case, a criminal behaviour order after a successful public order prosecution would prevent this gang from staging any further criminal activity and uploading it to YouTube. The police also have the same powers. Certainly didn't stop them from pursuing Marcus Potter, who it was claimed was harassing a certain group of people by filming them obsessively on his mobile phone. They even went so far as slamming him up on remand for several months before his case could be heard because they claimed he had broken the conditions of his order. But of course, that was because he was harassing a special class of victim who were given priority access to the criminal justice process. Yes, police officers themselves. Because, you see, Marcus Potter's crime was to film police officers without their permission on a fairly regular basis. Not quite as regular nor as prolific as Wheelie K and Little Harry 15's uploads to YouTube, but never mind. Let's hope they wheel in front of a police officer out doing their shopping sometime soon so something will actually get done. Still, maybe little Harry 15 thinks it's okay to glorify criminal behaviour because YouTube have told him it's okay. He does, after all, have the YouTube verification badge next to his name and both he and Wheelie K have monetized their content with companies like GoDaddy and Huawei, whoever they are, advertising against them. Who was it that said crime doesn't pay? Definitely not YouTube. Oh, the irony of it all. These guys make videos showing people how to break the law and get monetized. I show people how to uphold the law and I get demonetized. Perhaps in future, if I deliver all my commentary on a push bike as I weave in and out of frightened shoppers in a supermarket, YouTube won't have any problem with my content. Thus far, and as you would expect, the police have done nothing to arrest or deter Wheelie K or his playmates. Only two days ago, he posted a video of himself glorifying yet more of his criminal behaviour on our public roads, which YouTube are happily making money out of. I won't hold my breath for anyone in authority to do a damn thing about this, but my threat to prosecute this guy stands. If Sussex police do nothing within five months, which brings us dangerously close to the six-month limitation period on summary offences, then I'll invoke my rights under Section 6 of the Prosecution of Offences Act and bring a private prosecution against all of those involved, even if it means travelling all the way to Brighton just to lay an information at the local magistrates. When it comes to the police, if a job is worth doing, then do it your fucking self. Due to the subject matter of my channel, YouTube are no longer recommending my videos. So if you think my content and my calls is worthwhile, please tell as many others as you can about me. The bigger this channel grows, the better I can fight police abuses of authority and empower as many people as possible to do the same.